I'll invite you to follow along in the back side of your bulletin. There's an, uh, an outline for you. And, and in your Bibles, as we, we're in this uh, Gospel of Luke, uh, the Apostle Luke, inspired by the Spirit, and we're moving through this series, The Fusion of, of Faith, which is, for us, that divine accomplishment, we call that faith, of bringing together that which was separate into a whole living being. That's the Lord God's desire for us, to live as whole living beings in Him and with His perspective and and priorities in, in, in mind. I wonder, as we come together on this Independence Day weekend, I wonder about those people who who left homes and businesses and marriages and families behind a long time ago to fight on behalf of an ideal called freedom. An independent country and nation. Various places that were living and colonies that were established, separate, yet longing for a unity around an independent country and nation. I wonder if I were one of those who had left farm or business and family behind, if I would have been able to be as, as focused, as determined, as dedicated as they were. Sitting there in trenches on a day like today, soggy and wet and lonesome for home and bellies hungry maybe nursing an injury from a battle, uh, longing for the the comforts of a pillow under their, their head. All that they were experiencing, pressing upon them. What would have been the result in your life, or I think about me, if I were in their shoes? Would I have been as dedicated and focused to that ideal before them, that I would be willing to give up everything? even my life, so that others who come after me might know this freedom? I think about men and women today who are far away from home, giving up the comforts of this country, manning a post, feet cold, hearts that are longing for loved ones. And they stand their post in dedication to this ideal we call freedom, never wavering from that but standing firm in the protection that we might enjoy these freedoms today. What is it between the experiences of life that press upon us and that dedication that despite these experiences, we maintain the course and the call of faith to which we've been called? Jesus today gives the disciples an opportunity in the work of the kingdom to be sent out And says, careful, you're going to be experiencing some mighty powerful, interesting things. Don't be distracted by those experiences and the results of them. Stay the course. Remember what's important. Keep my kingdom in mind. We hear in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 4, that Jesus is sending out his disciples for kingdom work. And we hear it unfold in these ways in these verses. That Jesus appointed 72 others, not just the 12, but others. And he sent them two by two ahead of him into every town and village that he was going to be visiting. Messengers, ambassadors ahead for him. And he told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. You're going to be alone out there, harangued by life. And you're going to be tempted to give in to the experiences and the results rather than my goal for you. He said, Ask the Lord to send out workers into the harvest field, that others might join you in this task. And he says, go, I am sending you out like lambs among the wolves. Really, Lord? I have to be a lamb? Couldn't I be some other kind of animal to defend myself? No, I've got to be like a lamb? A servant? Sacrificial? Giving myself as you would give yourself? Jesus says, go and be about my kingdom work. He's giving to his disciples here in these first couple of verses uh, some instructions on how he's calling them to interact 
uh, with people that he's going to be meeting and, and what his purpose for them is. And he says to them, while you're doing this, you're going to be proclaiming my kingdom and experiencing some wonderful things of my kingdom. Lives are going to be changed. In fact, Jesus later on would say, I'm giving you power to trample on snakes and scorpions and, and to overcome the forces of evil. Uh, that's the result of my working in you. Don't be distracted by that, what you're experiencing. Remember, there's something more important. Remember that your names are written in heaven. That my kingdom work for which I'm sending you out is what the priorities for your life, priority for your life and your living is. And so Jesus sends them out. Jesus prepares his disciple, disciples for what they will experience. And he empowers them uh, to exercise the fruit of the Spirit as they're being sent out. In verses 5 to 16, we see that the Spirit of the kingdom is meant to be worked out within them. Remember those fruits of the Spirit we heard last week in the letter to the Galatians? Peace, patience, kindness, joy, love. Remember those fruits? Well, we see those fruits now being reflected in what Jesus is telling his disciples in verses 5 to 16, they can experience. When you enter a house, Jesus says, first say, peace to this house. Well, what fruit of the Spirit's being exercised here? Peace. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it'll return to you. He says, exercise the fruit of joy. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Let them experience the fruit of joy in serving you there. He says, don't move around from house to house. You know, if it's not going well for you in a house, stay there. Exercise some self-control, that fruit of the Spirit, because I've got you there for a reason. In verse 8, he says, when you enter a town and are welcomed, Eat what is offered to you. We could put in parentheses, even if you don't like it. Even if it's not your cup of tea. In other words, express kindness when it's offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near you. Be kind. And verse 10, 11, and 12, Jesus says, When you enter a town and aren't welcome, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Be sure of this. The kingdom of God has come near you. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. What possible fruit of the Spirit might be exercised in this way but love? Love is of the gospel and of grace, but love is also of the warning of the law that God's justice demonstrated in his judgment will be known one day, speaking the truth in love. And Jesus says in verse 16, So whoever listens to you, they listen to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. So exercise the fruit of gentleness when you're conveying my kingdom truths to people. Are the fruit of the Spirit borne out in what they're going to be experiencing here as Jesus sends them out? And the 72, we hear in verse 17, they return with joy. And they said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Wow! What we've experienced and the results of that experience are incredible. They've gotten a bit distracted. You see, the temptation is to focus on what you, what we experience, and the results of that experience. You know that in your life, right? Those Job-like times, days, and seasons. It's easy to get focused on the experience that we're encountering and the results of that experience, which oftentimes can be negative, hard, difficult than to stay the course in what God's called us to do in obedience and following in Him and His kingdom and in His ways. It's not about the experience. It's what I've called you to do, to be in me, my son, my daughter, my faithful child, my kingdom work. And Jesus, of course, is the example. He is 
Well, he's the Savior for us in his divine accomplishment of staying the course. Think about what he experienced and the results of those experiences. Ridicule and reject. Denial by his own. Tra a, a, tra a traitor within his own who would give him over. Led like a lamb unto the slaughter. And yet he didn't fight back. He didn't object. He didn't let the experience of his reason for coming to earth as a human being and the results of that experience detract him from what he was about for us as the Messiah, as our Savior. In fact, in the midst of this experience of being crucified for our salvation, he would even cry out as his blood shed in the sacrifice for our sins, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. And he could speak those words of grace for you and, and me as well. When, in the midst of our experiences of life, we find ourselves a bit distracted from his call and his ways. Father, forgive them. They've forgotten their way. Bring them back to me. Remind them of who they are and what they are called to be about as my people. And give to them the new life of my resurrection within them. They're going to be tempted. We're going to be tempted by the experiences and the results of life to let that take center stage. But in those temptations, we're not provided without a way out. To overcome those temptations and live victoriously in the life that you and I have been called in the freedom of this divine accomplishment of faith. The Lord's independence that he's given to us eternity style to live in the freedom of who we are as God's people. Jesus says, look, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. This is my power at work in your life for the freedom that I've given you as my people. This is me living in you and through you for my kingdom's sake. But Jesus says, as he calls us together in the unity of faith, this fusion of faith, remember, rejoice. Not that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in eternity. I have no idea what I'll experience this week, and neither do you. Ah, I've got some glimpses maybe of some things that are on my calendar and need to do and get done. But there'll be new experiences this week that we're not expecting. And there's going to be temptations before each one of us that those experiences define our life instead of who we are in Christ. Names written in eternity. The kingdom work that he's called us each to be about. To express this freedom in Christ. The focus is not meant to be on what we are experiencing in life and the accompanying results of these experiences. The focus that Jesus calls us to in life and his kingdom is about what's been done for us. And what we get to do in the work of the Lord as members of his kingdom. That he invites us to walk with him, to live in him, and to convey him and his ways to the world. And we do so in the blessing of the freedoms of this country. The land of the free and the brave. Those who, sitting in wet, soggy, cold trenches didn't let the experience of their suffering define them, but stayed true to the call of independence.
celebrate this gift as a country, and as a country, you and I, living in it, we have the opportunity to declare the kingdom of our God and the freedoms. The kingdom of our God, which is our primary opportunity of focus in life and living in him. As the kingdom of heaven is in you. Paul would talk about it this way in Galatians chapter 6. May I never boast except in the cross of Christ. The kingdom of the Lord in me. Through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Nothing, no experience, none of its results are going to distract me from who I am in Christ Jesus as his son, as his daughter. To live in that freedom of Christ in me. So that Christ might be known then through me. Again from Galatians chapter 6. Let us not grow weary then in doing what is right. For we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. And so then, whenever we have the opportunity, let us work for the good of all. And especially for those of the family of faith. The kingdom of God and his ways known through us. Friends, as we go forward as God's people, as his grace is known in us and through us, as you live in the various experiences of his kingdom and life that you'll experience this week, go in the joy of Christ living in you, living through you, and keeping you in his kingdom perspective. Go and make disciples of all nations. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank and praise you that you've given us this holy calling and the freedom of your kingdom free from sin and the power of death and the claim of the devil over us, that we're free, independent in you, to live with the sole purpose and priority of of Jesus living in me and through me for your kingdom's sake. No matter what I experience, Lord, no matter what good or difficulties we might experience, keep us focused in you and on you, that our lives represent you to the world in the freedom of your kingdom, in the thanksgiving of the freedom that we have in this land. In Jesus' name and to your praise and glory we pray. Amen.